Welcome back to the second episode of NBSFN, your no bullshit fitness news, where we do not believe in political correctness. Just facts, coffee, and deadlifts. Now in this episode, we're talking about spot reduction and a new trend among the fitness Instagram influencers where they love to point at their arms and their love handles and their heads and their shoulders and their knees, even their toes, mind you, saying that you can choose where you burn fat. We're also gonna be talking about fasted cardio and whether or not your body is primed and optimized to burn fat if you don't eat before doing cardio. We're also gonna talk about pre and post workout nutrition, how to optimize your meals to make sure you get the best strength and muscle gain benefits. And finally, we're gonna finish off with a two minute drill rapid fire Q&A for my Instagram. If you don't follow me, you can do that here. In the meantime, make sure you like the video, give it a thumbs up, follow if you don't already. And first, a quick word from our sponsors. Just kidding, we don't have any sponsors. Let's dive right into it. Now on the topic of spot reduction, a lot of fitness Instagrammers have been posting images where they point to their lower arm fat or they point to their inner thighs or their love handles or any number of places on their body and make you think through this misleading imagery that you can choose where you burn fat. And this is all related to the idea or this myth of spot reduction. Now, NBSFN is very excited for you to meet our chief gym correspondent, Johnny Bag of Donuts. Johnny Bag of D for short. And Johnny, what do you think about spot reduction? What does the science behind spot reduction really say? All right, let's go. Let's sit. Johnny. Let's sit. Oh, yeah. Johnny. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Jordan, didn't hear you there. Johnny Bag of Donuts reporting live from the gym. And today I want to talk to you about spot reduction. It's a really big topic on Instagram lately. See a lot of people talking about it. And here's the deal. You cannot choose where you burn fat. And my sister, bless her heart, she's always asking me, Johnny, uh, Johnny, I just want to burn this because I saw on Instagram you can burn this fat. And I was like, sister, listen, listen to me very closely. You can't just abracadabra the fuck out of your fat. It's not how you burn fat. You can't say you want to burn fat here, or you want to burn your neck fat, or you want to burn your dick fat. Okay, Johnny, sorry about that. I think the connection got cut off there. What Johnny was trying to say is that spot reduction is just not supported in the literature. It's not worth your time to try and target your lower arm fat, your love handles, your thunder thighs, your neck fat, your cheek fat, any fat. You can't choose where you lose fat. As long as you're in a calorie deficit, you will lose fat, but your body decides in what order. Now, bear in mind, guarantee there are going to be some Dementors and Death Eaters and Muggles and Squibs and Werewolves of the Sort in the comments section saying things like, well, Jordan, actually, you can choose where you lose fat. There's plenty of research to say that, and I'll be very honest with you. There is some research that shows you can choose where you lose body fat, but the whole point of science-based training and nutrition isn't just to look at what's possible, it's also to look at what's practical, okay? And if we're looking at what's practical and what you can do to a significant degree, spot reduction is a waste of your time. Trying to do 5,000 reps of ab crunches because you're trying to burn fat in your abs is a waste of time. Trying to do 10,000 reps of tricep press downs because you want to burn fat from the underarm is a waste of time. Might you burn some fat there? Maybe, but your time is better spent being in a calorie deficit to lose the fat, and then being in a slow bulk, slightly increasing your calories to build muscle where you want. That's the best bet over time. You cannot choose to any significant degree where you're gonna burn fat so you can get more defined. Spend more time getting as lean as possible by being in a calorie deficit, and then going into a lean bulk, slightly increasing your calories while building muscle in the areas that you want, and over time you'll get that lean defined look. Spot reduction. Save that for the birds. Now, if you really want to piss somebody off, here's what you got to do. You find an old school bodybuilder, an old school bodybuilder who wears fasted cardio as a prideful patch on their sleeve. They tell everybody they do fasted cardio. They wake up every day. I'm doing fasted cardio. Haven't eaten a thing yet. You tell that person that fasted cardio doesn't have any extra benefit than unfasted cardio. You just do it right next to them eating your oatmeal. Doesn't matter, same thing. I found this out because I posted on my Instagram the other day that fasted cardio holds no extra benefit than unfasted cardio. And boy, was I blasted by the old school cardio people. And here's the thing, I wanna be very clear. I'm not saying fasted cardio is bad. It's totally fine. If you like it, please do it. But it's not better. And it's certainly not worse, this myth 
that fasted cardio burns more fat than unfasted cardio stems from a man named Bill Phillips, who published a book called Body for Life. Really famous book, one of the most famous books ever written on fitness, which I believe was published in the early 90s. And what he said was that doing cardio after an overnight fast would allow you to switch substrate usage. So rather than using carbohydrates, you would use more fats and thus you'd be burning more fat. Now in the short term, he's correct. You will burn more fat in the short term, but if you are not in a calorie deficit at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you did your cardio fasted or unfasted, you're not gonna be losing fat. Now, a recent study in 2014 published by Brad Schoenfeld, James Krieger, Alan Aragon looked at this side by side. For four weeks, they looked at 20 women doing fasted protocols versus unfasted, and they found no significant difference in fat loss over time. There's another six week study, which by the way, both of these links are in the description of this video. You can see for yourself, read the studies. There is no significant difference in fat loss, whether you do fasted cardio or unfasted cardio, which brings me to the point, do what you like best. If you enjoy fasted cardio, if it gives you more energy, if you like it, if you just feel good, do it. If you hate fasted cardio, if it doesn't make you feel better, if it makes you wanna kill somebody, don't do it because the reality is, as long as your calories are in check, the results are gonna be the same. All right, rambunctious little unicorn, let's talk about pre and post workout nutrition because there's a lot of misinformation on that. And the reality is this, a lot of people wanna confuse you in the fitness industry. They like to make things seem way more complicated than they are because the more complicated it is, the more you'll need them. And the more you need them, the more likely you are to pay them. So let's break it down as simple as possible. Now in this segment, I'm gonna share with you two of my favorite pre and post workout nutrition recipes. I wanna make this very clear. This idea of, a, uh, of an anabolic window that you use to, if you, don't, if you don't eat within this time period after you work out, then you're gonna miss out on all your gains is what Johnny Bag of Donuts says. It's a myth, it's not true. There's no such thing as an anabolic window, okay? The anabolic window doesn't exist. What's most important is when you're thinking about timing, generally speaking, you wanna eat about one to three hours before you work out and one to three hours after you work out. Simple as that, cut and dry, no BS, fitness news, that's it. One to three hours before, one to three hours after. You wanna have some protein and carbohydrates before and some protein and carbohydrates after. The way I like to think about it is sandwich your workouts with protein and carbs on either side. That's it. You can't go wrong as long as you're within that time frame. Let's say you go three and a half hours. Doesn't matter. It's okay. As long as your calories and your protein are in check, you're good. Now I'm gonna give you some examples. Okay, so if you go to sfinnercircle.com, this is my membership site where I give recipes and workouts every month and I wanna share with you two of my favorite recipes. The first one being protein powered oats. This is delicious. It's phenomenal. Now you'll see that there are 505 calories in a serving, 62 grams of carbs, and 37 grams of protein. If you want fewer calories or fewer carbs, totally fine. For example, you could just take the chia seeds out. That's totally optional. You don't need it. This is just an example of a very delicious, high protein, high carb, you could have moderate to high carb pre-workout or post-workout meal. Really good option. Another one of my personal favorites is the crispy honey Parmesan popcorn chicken. It's out of this world. It's phenomenal if I do say so myself. And fortunately, I can swear on this because this is just my personal network that I'm putting on YouTube. So that being said, as you can see, it's 250 calories per serving, 27 grams of protein, 16 grams of carbs. And again, if you want to have more calories or more carbs, you could either have another serving or you could have a potato or rice or another form of carbohydrate. The whole point being, these are just some examples to show you protein and carbs before, protein and carbs after, one to three hours before, one to three hours after. That's pre and post workout nutrition. That is optimal pre and post workout nutrition. Do not let Johnny Bag of Donuts with the anabolic window talk scare you into thinking that you need to be doing something else or that you're missing out on anything. This is it, simple as that. If this helped you, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already, and tell me in the comments what's the most ridiculous fitness myth that you've heard of that you might want me to cover in the next episode of NBSFM. We're gonna end this episode with a rapid fire Q&A two minute drill. Rico's gonna put 120 seconds of the clock right now. I'm gonna dive into my Instagram Q&A, which if you don't follow me yet, make sure you do and you can ask me questions before the next Q&A. We're gonna go in three, two, one. And the first question is, 
Alrighty then, these questions are good. We've also got, which scale do you use? I use whatever scale is in my home. I have no idea what the brand is, and really it doesn't matter. Just use whatever scale you have and use the same one consistently so you get a consistent reading. What are your go-to meals? Hello, Natalia Frank from The Inner Circle. I, uh, I would say go-to meals, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, um, oatmeal, and then I cannot go without saying shakshuka, amazing Middle Eastern dish. If you haven't tried it, Google it. Are BCAAs just hype or are they beneficial? I'd say for 99.999% of wizards and muggles and witches and all these people, they're a waste of time. You don't really need them. It's uh, If your protein is in check, if you're getting enough protein on a daily basis, BCAAs are mostly just expensive urine. Uh, otherwise, if you're fasting, sometimes they can be beneficial if you're training fasted, but for the vast majority of people, you just don't need them. Reese's or Snickers, I would say Snickers 100% of the time. What's your favorite vegetable? Um, I was gonna, let's see, uh, sweet potato, if that's actually a vegetable. Is that a vegetable? I think it is. We're gonna go sweet potato. Although it is a starchy vegetable if it is a vegetable. Uh, any tips on dealing with soreness? If you're strength training, get used to it. Let's see, do you need a Facebook to join the Inner Circle? I'm only on Instagram. Uh, no, you do not need a Facebook, but it is beneficial just because even though the you don't need it, the group is absolutely amazing. What's your opinion on cellulite? I definitely need more time for this one, but I'll tell you this. I cannot tell you not to feel insecure about something. That would be very pretentious of me. But what I will say is this, 97% of women have it. A lot of men have it too, and I can tell you that most people just don't give a shit, okay? It doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel bad about it. If you feel insecure, then that's up to you. But I will say this, if you're hanging out with people who do give a shit, you should probably stop hanging out with those people because they're not worth your time. So with three seconds left, I love you, thank you, I appreciate you. Subscribe if you don't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much, see you next week. Should I say the second edition, second episode? Right. <laughs> Fitness news. We <laughs> Fitness news. Where we are not politically correct at all. We say fuck, but we bleep it out. Nope. It's dumb. That's dumb. Thank you. Just get to the point. Get to the point. About spot reduction and how Instagram about spot reduction. We're talking about the myth of spot reduction. Welcome back to the second episode of NBSF. <clears throat>